so close to the grizzly that I have to stay inside the vehicle. Join me on a full day exploring some amazing landscapes and seeing some of the best wildlife this national park has to offer. Absolutely stunning. I take you behind the scenes photographing landscape and wildlife. If you're new to this channel, my name is Matt Shannon and I'm a full-time photographer in beautiful British Columbia. Over the next few weeks, I will be sharing content from my exciting trips to the Teton Mountains, Yellowstone National Park, East Coast of Canada, and everywhere in between. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Uh, it's a beautiful morning here. I'm down in the Tetons. I was up in Yellowstone yesterday. And hopefully when the sun comes up, the fog here will break and we'll be able to capture some of the mountains but it's stunning down along here with all the fog so i'm just going to capture just little moments down here i think the road's just up here so everyone sees this and they want to pull over and check it out so the composition that i would love to have is this winding river obviously with as many aspens and we got a ton of them off to the side here there's a really beautiful island right here that would be nice to capture but if you look back this way you know there's probably about 30 photographers and last night i shot past them up on the hill to kind of get the bow the bend of the river and now they'll be all of my shots so i kind of have to pick and choose what sort of angle you want to get and then knowing where the fog is going to lift. All right, to bring you up to speed, uh, we are at Oxbow Bend, and this is in the Grand Teton National Park. Here I am zooming into the map, and right up here is where we are parked. I was preparing for the next morning sunrise shoot, and I was checking different compositions. Now, while we were out here, uh, we witnessed a really exciting chase of a bald eagle going after an osprey. So this osprey went and grabbed a fish and then before you knew it the bald eagle obviously spotted and was waiting for it. And you can see the fish that's down there and I'll slow it down as the osprey turns. You can see its talons holding on to a fish. And this is quite common I see not only in the interior but on the coast in Canada where the eagle really just waits and chases the offspray and hopes that the offspray will just let the food go. And, but in this case, it looks like the offspray got its food. Now the lighting wasn't great, but I did capture this shot of this area uh, just so I had it on record for the following day. But of course I wanted that sunrise glow on the mountains, which is why I've returned this morning but it's socked in with fog right now. So now you're up to speed. So it's been socked in here, quite a bit worse than the last time we spoke. Obviously the sun is kind of peeking through over there. Let's turn that brightness down. So yeah, hopefully any minute now, uh, this will kind of clear up, at least burn off enough. Looks like some blue sky above. I think my plan here, depending on the mountain peaks, but there's some really nice yellows and stuff in the foreground, but I like this island way off there. So I'll take a couple pictures and then I might make my way up there, kind of photographing down the river. I've also thought about adding a whole bunch of these beautiful red. I don't know if you can see the color, but really nice foreground with a, uh, shallow depth of field.
kind of create a bit of a bouquet, kind of shooting through. Look at that, the fog is just broke. And you can see one of the peaks way off in the back. Actually, you can see two, there's another one over there. It'll be really nice once the sun kind of hits this little bend here, because there's a lot of really nice reds, greens, and oranges, and yellows, of course. And uh, we got more friends here coming to join, take some photographs. What's cool is that there's a kayaker just right there, kind of off in the middle. If only it was a red canoe, but then again, it would be a little bit more Canadian. And we're in the United States, so. But yeah, maybe the canoe will go out and kind of add a little bit more to the scene. Keep shooting. Absolutely stunning. So I have this beautiful view and I've got my Jeep and we're on the side of the road. And after a beautiful morning of shooting, I gotta make myself some coffee. So this is not the cleanest setup, but basically I got my laptop, we got our clothes, my wife, my baby, then my suitcase. My laptop usually goes into here. Then we got baby carrying bag, we got a fridge, down below is where we put our um, whole stove and everything. It goes underneath the fridge. Up there is I got two solar panels, 100 watt each. Then I got camera equipment um, that fit in here as well as camo, cords, various different things. Water jug. Tripods fit above here. Obviously you need your ketchup and your mustard but then here I use a jet boil boils things really fast especially if there's a lot of wind and then an aero press then I'm feeling really crafty later on I will grind some coffee in this guy uh, with some back home coffee level ground right now I'm using Oh, Tony's coffee, and it's from Oregon, I believe. And uh, it's already pre-ground, and that allows me to just be really quick because I need to get back out and start shooting. So, time to get back out on the road. We are walking through beautiful field. It's not wet or anything. There's a bit of uh, frost that's still melting and we got this incredible view of the Teton Mountains. Um, so there's this sort of hedge here or this, uh, this kind of lengthened mound that we want to hike up and up and over so we can get a better view of the valley and uh, the mountains. The Jeep is way off in the back there and 
with a telephoto like my 70 to 200 you can really zoom in and add some compression to bring those mountains right up close behind the Jeep and it was really fun taking some family photos and and uh, and then, then I got on the Jeep to take some photographs of the mountains so that I was a bit higher than this like bluff right here right now I thought we were hiking along a path but I think it's just well it is a path but made by cattle in this area maybe it's bison not really sure I haven't seen any I see deer prints actually all through here um, some of them are bigger too so they could be elk now this is the time where we're out walking in this field and we're hoping that there is some wildlife to get with that backdrop because that backdrop is something else you got ribbons of fog all the peat standing up and then this low-lying grassland that has copper red oranges it's just stunning out Okay, that was crazy. I got a couple of shots, but mostly some video running out to where my wife is because there is some pronghorn antelope. Now we gotta be a bit quiet, not look like I'm charging towards them. They're quite a ways off, so wow. There you go, beautiful. Are pretty. They see all of us, I can see I know, their horns. If you go down, they don't see you. And... Oh, they can definitely see. Oh, one's, one's chugging there's, along. There's a whole other herd too. Okay, that was quite amazing. I might have a droplet on the lens. Sorry about that. But my wife here saw that uh, the pronghorn were over there. We thought it, she thought it was a fence post, but it wasn't. It was one of them. And then before you know it, I was taking a picture of the mountains and I heard mad, mad, mad. I look up, there they were running along and like this view is just absolutely epic. Because we parked over there to just be able to see all of this get some landscape shots and then hope that there was bison or elk here in this uh, field and obviously um, some antelope so very cool I think we're gonna keep walking like right now they don't have any of the mountains in the background but they're way over there and I'm just using the the 70 to 200 I even took off the teleconverter on it I know because I wanted a little bit more of the landscape I didn't even bring it. 
Uh, I have my backpack right here. And so yeah, the teleconverter would have been would have been nice. But it was also great to be able to see the whole map. Like that, there, there's quite a bit in frame when you zoom in to 200 mils. My 500 would have been great, but I would only got the fog. I wouldn't have gotten the peaks. So we're gonna keep walking on. And uh, this is just so lovely. I mean, this backdrop is so great. Everyone's just driving back and forth on the highway. And if you go further south uh, down the valley, you could see that there's just thick fog. We drove in it for a moment. And I was like, nope, turn around. Okay, you're probably wondering when we're gonna get to photographing the grizzly bear. Well, a lot has happened today and there's still some more action to go ahead and show you. Uh, and then, sure enough, we'll start photographing a grizzly bear. So we see some antelope. Uh, they're off out in the field. What's crazy, oh, way off in the distance, there is one that's approaching. Oh, I got some video of it. And they're all like freaking out. Their ears are just pinned towards the uh, forest line. And my wife, who's holding the camera, just noticed that it was another male. They're surrounding him. They're sniffing him out. This is awesome. Yeah. Oh, there's action. There they are, they're budding. Now we're in the middle of the day and we got some heat waves. So any photographs I do capture are gonna be a bit soft and a little wonky if you were to zoom in. And these guys are pretty shy, so as soon as I went walking into the field, they did move further away. Now I did take a few shots, but it's always best to get out early in the morning and the evening, and usually that's when wildlife is most active anyways. They're locking horns. Nothing too amazing as far as uh, technique goes. I am shooting auto ISO. Shutter doesn't have to be super fast until they start running. So I crank up the shutter. But my aperture is like F4, just wide open. They're so far away. So we hopped back into the Jeep and what do you know, we saw some more at a different location. So I got a little bit closer this time and I took another shot. Now we're traveling north up to Yellowstone National Park. And again, on the side of the highway, we see this bull elk bugling out into this incredible field with the mountains in the background. And so I had to pull over and I didn't really film my whole process or anything, just long enough to take some photos and do a, a pano shot. Now, why am I using a telephoto and stitching them all together and not just a wider focal length? Well, the telephoto gives me a lot more compression and I still wanted to see more of the scene, like the mountains in the background, the whole bit. And this gives me a super, super high res image. One so big that I actually used a screenshot for this video because it was just slowing my computer way down. So we've been trying to track down uh, at least one grizzly. There's a few of them obviously here um, in this area. And we're following basically a caravan of people. 
because there was a grizzly spotted down this dirt road all the way down here. Uh, I think is what they call Blondie or a daughter of Blondie. I don't know all the bears' names. I do know that there's 399, so a bear 399 is a female and she has a cub. And then there's 1096, which is a female but alone, uh, no cubs. And they're beautiful, their coat uh, looks really nice and grizzled. And uh, yeah, obviously the, the landscape is, is stunning for it. So whenever there's a bear sighting, and this is what happens. There's just vehicles just swarming to the location. And the rangers too also have to outrun typically the photographers because some photographers get really, really, really close. Too close. And it gets to be very, very dangerous for both the bear and for the people. All right, so no one knows where the bear's actually gonna be going, but we went up the road, uh, like, what, five miles? Um, not, not even, and there's another dirt road. So we're on the north side, we're hoping that the bear's gonna come out this way. And bada boom, we got ourselves a beautiful sightseeing. Now, the sun is behind us, not, not back, backlit, if we do see the grizzly. So after some driving, a lot of waiting, and some luck, we made it to this area where this grizzly usually gets seen, and sure enough, there she was, digging away, looking for some food. But the colors are just unreal, so I'm really hoping that she keeps... She keeps moving along here. So 
photographed the grizzly video. It was fantastic. But I gotta say, um, it's nice to be able to meet some other photographers, but we're in a traffic jam on a dirt road and people are getting out and walking right up close to the grizzly. They're pulling on either side of the road. If there was an emergency, there, there would be no way for someone to be able to get out. I can see the grizzly right over here. People are climbing on trees and stuff. Some people are backing up. It is wild here. Grizzly is, what they say, 30 yards from us. Just got some light, it's, it's moving away from us. But it's just traffic jam. And we're trying to decide, well, I'm just listening to the ranger. Ranger D Joe, oh man, what a tough job. Good for him for just being patient. Uh, but it's it can be a bit of a nightmare out here just because of an emergency happening. Everyone just is so bear crazy. Oh, I could see the grizzly. She's moving along. She's oh, just yeah, walking she's away. And it's perfect lighting. The lighting is just I you know I'm looking at my settings and I hope I'm shooting fast enough. Hopefully they're not blurry. There's vibrations of the vehicle that I'm shooting on. There's heat waves. There's a lot of things that I'm not sure if I got the shot. The video work, worked out, I think, quite well. I don't know if, can I go backwards? Why is this? Oh, yeah. So that is Ranger Joe. Man, I wonder what his Instagram handle is. Leave me alone, I just want to relax. <laughs> oh, he's directing traffic. So the grizzly is just off here. She got a little spooked. And he's just trying to, I mean, it's confusing, right? Yeah, here he goes. There she is. It's getting darker now, and so I'm really only doing video. Oh, whoa, look at that. There she is, wow. She's digging for roots, is what someone else was saying. Ranger Joe did a great job. Traffic seems to be a lot better. Oh man, she's beautiful. We'll be lucky if we can get out of here by nightfall. But. Can't wait to show you some footage. So if you like this content, please like it and subscribe. Now it's worth mentioning that about 90% of the time, the grizzly has its head down and it's just digging down in the long tall grass. So to get like a nice clear shot of the head, first of all, the grass needs to be uh, a bit more trampled down, a bit more open. And obviously the grizzly needs to be looking up to the side. And there's a few moments uh, that you saw in some of those photos where uh, the grizzly was sniffing and using her nose, um, smelling whatever. It could be a million different things. Uh, but those are fun shots to get as well as just when it's moving left or right and looking around. Those are the times to get the shot. Everyone, at least in the crowd that was around me, was quite respectful when it came to sound. They were being as quiet as they can be, so there wasn't any huge issues there. So I'm photographing and filming with the Nikon Z9. There are a few shots with the Nikon D850, and my wife took that when the Grizzly got so close, it actually just passed by our Jeep. Now there were some shots that I did out of the Jeep, standing, and that was because we were far enough away from the Grizzly. The lens on the Nikon Z9 is a 500mm f4 and on the D850 I have a 70 to 200 2.8 paired with a 1.4 teleconverter. So if you're shooting from your vehicle or using your vehicle as a support, make sure that you're not shooting across the hood because there's a lot of heat rays that come off of it. And if your vehicle's turned on, it's going to create vibrations up through your arms or if your lens is supported on the mirror, like I have, uh, having the engine turned off um, is saving the environment as well as not creating vibrations. For links to more of my gear, you can take a look down in the description below and you can check that all out. Okay, so the Grizzlies to our left, but we have to keep going. But. Take a look at the rig in front of us. Wait. What is that? Is it an F2? F1? It's an F1. Is that a shot over? Is it a shot over? I don't know. 
Look at that. You can't see he's, it in the camera. But look, he's there tilting she is. it. There she look is. There, she's beautiful. Okay, take a look at this brick. <laughs> now as I'm driving out here, I remember that I have a few more shots that I want to share with you. This one is in color, but I wanted to know what you thought of it in black and white. So do we have a winner here? Better black and white? Let's try a black and white of this mountainscape. And here it is in color. Which one's better? Here's another one where it's in color and boom, it's in black and white. I have a slight suspicion I know which one you'll pick, but I need to know for sure. And last, this is a photo I forgot to add in one of my previous episodes. If you haven't seen that episode, you need to check it out. Maybe it'll pop up on the screen at the end of this episode. But anyways, this is the shot. Hey, if you like this content, give me that thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, think about subscribing. It's been epic here. Uh, so if you have any questions, or if you have visited the Teton Mountains, Yellowstone, Glacier National Park, let me know what you've taken photos of, what some tips uh, I would love to hear from you guys, um, and uh, for other people to go ahead and read. So yeah, that's basically it. We're gonna take off. We'll see you in the next one. This place is wild.